It's time to whip off that bra, pour a glass of your favorite wine, and join us for this week's Drinks at Six podcast. Hey, Monica. Happy post-Halloween sugar crash hump day Wednesday cocktails at six. How are you? Good. I still have the Weight Watchers uh, <laughs> app on my phone. Still there. I'm still paying for it. <laughs> I want to leave it there because I'll be using it. I've dug into all my kids' candy and it's become my workday sugar crash. <laughs> did, you, oh, did you go as a uh, slutty Rubik's Cube? What did you do? Uh, you had a challenge last week and I have not I seen I recycled any. my Wonder Woman costume. Oh, Thank you very much. Okay, but I think I you couldn't get sexy with the Rubik's Cube, okay? <laughs> <laughs> just didn't happen. All right? But I admire you for saying you would take on the challenge, even though you lied. <laughs> Did you have a good one? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It was great. Oh, uh, good. Yeah. I love Halloween. Some people get so into it, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's bigger than Christmas. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, some people are really... Re- I'm not that into it, but... Yeah. yeah, I'm into it. I like the treats and the sweets. <laughs> and the potato. I love the mini bags of potato chips. Anyways, oh, we won't go yeah. down that road again. Okay. Well, I but. love seeing my little person and all the other little subsequent people dress up in their costume. Of course, yes, you just knew kids. that it was going to be frozen Halloween with Elsa's and Anna's and Olaf's and Christian, whatever the guy's name was. <laughs> anyway, and, and zombies are big this year. Yeah, zombies, zombies are huge. Yeah, the toddlers the are just heck? eating them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start with oh. my Maddie moment right now because it ties in so nice. <laughs> Please. Okay, she's four. I don't know why I have to keep saying that. I think it shocks me <laughs> that a four year old knows as much as she does. But um yeah, so she's really obsessed with zombies right now and of course like zombies and monsters are something I always have to work with her on and explain that they're not real and they're not scary and you know they're not real and uh and then every time you know she brings it up to relatives or friends of course they try to scare her and then i have to undo all that crap so i've explained to her that zombies don't aren't really true but there's something fun that we play with and about and you know tell stories about and same with monsters and anyway uh then someone told her something i don't know that they were true so now she wants to know where zombies come from well, you know where zombies go. That's worse than asking me where babies yeah. come from. I, so I did the typical mom thing. I'm like, ask your dad. Your dad is oh, all about I zombies. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're at it, throw that other question at him about where the wind comes from. Holy <laughs> crap. That is a loaded question. That oh, is a loaded okay. question. Don't try to oust your mummy like that. Yeah. I'm not Mensa. So anyway... <laughs> Uh, welcome to our <laughs> weekly drinks at six podcast. Welcome, Monica. Well, Back to you. the girl cheers, cave. Cheers, <coughs> cheers yeah. to you. No bacon this week. Sorry, sister. I figured That's with okay. all that. I think it's good. I'm good with the wine <laughs> and yeah. water. Yeah, it's and excellent. water. Excellent. Flush yeah. it out. We're detoxing. Well, yeah. Oh, speaking of yes, detoxing, I got the um, elixir for you. Yeah, I gotta ask you a question because it kind of grosses me out. Mm-hmm. I like my grapes fermented, um, but you just mentioned something potentially gross grosser than zombies about uh your milk fermented in the morning yeah you brush your teeth with toothpaste in your mouth what (laughs) what is this and what like let's talk about a little this is nutritional it is so this Mm. is called some people pronounce it kefir we my mom always pronounced it kefir but is it a leaf no it's not this is the most now listen very carefully So, when I yes, was a little Wolfgang. girl in the 70s, yes, <laughs> Wolfgang and Karen would drink this magic elixir. <laughs> so, my mom made it, and they drank it, and all I saw was my mom and dra- dad enjoying a glass of clumpy milk, and I thought oh, that is oh. so disgusting. I know, you're gagging. <laughs> and I could not understand it. I couldn't even, like, <laughs> get my head can't. around it. And all I ever heard was, it's good for you, it's good for you. And it tastes like buttermilk. If you like buttermilk, you'll like kefir. And I go, I don't think I'm going to like buttermilk either. Oh. So then, so this is 19, whatever, 79. And then fast forward to 2009, I turned 40. I went to the, li- the liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> After the liquor store, I went to the grocery store. <laughs> and I saw kefir on the shelves. And I'm like... Oh my God, that's what my mom and dad used to drink in the 70s and the 80s. So I uh, picked some up 
and it still looks disgusting. And I thought, well, it said on the thing, you can make it in a smoothie, whatever you want, right? So I made smoothies with it. Loved it. Couldn't even taste that there was anything fermented going on there. I called my mom and I said, Mom, I found the kefir and I'm drinking it. And I'm so... And she... And my dad said, Jesus Christ, Monica, <laughs> that stuff is expensive. Why are you buying that? We can make it for you. Don't buy it anymore. We're going to make it. We're going to start making it again. So my mom went to the, her health food store and said, I'd like to buy um, the uh, culture to Ugh. make kefir. And they said, well, you can't buy that anymore because when you use that culture, the um, milk ferments and it creates something like 1.5% alcohol or 2% alcohol. Ooh, so like it's that. illegal. Oh. Now you're listening, oh, aren't no, you? I like it. No, like so kefir. it's illegal for us to sell it. We can't sell it. So sorry, but you can't make your own kefir anymore. You can try other stuff. They gave her some other ideas and she was like, no. So she went online and hooked up with this Russian lady and my dad, mom and dad drove down to Etobicoke and met this la lady on a corner. Oh my God. And, got <laughs> and, bought the, and bought a stash of the culture off of this woman for five bucks. <laughs> I don't oh, know how many ounces. On a corner. <laughs> I was, I joked around with my mom. I'm like, so how many ounces did you get for five bucks? <laughs> Anyways, so they brought it home and in 2009, they started making it again. And the culture, what happens is it just keeps multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. So my mom just gives it away to anybody that's interested because there's only so much of it. That, but you have to, it's like, you know, in school when you get an egg and you have to take care of it like a baby. Yeah. That's what it's like. So if she goes away, my brother has to babysit the kefir. Like, <laughs> it's hilarious. It's like Because you have to keep parent. feeding it and keep, right? Is it going to be Anyways, real? Anyways, so the whole, yeah, <laughs> probably. So the whole thing with it is that the, it produces billions and billions of good bacteria so everybody that's like really proud of themselves because they're eating yogurt and greek yogurt and all like good for you that's great but this stuff is like i i said <laughs> said to somebody the other day you may as well eat that tablecloth if you're eating yogurt compared to what kefir can do for you like it is so so powerful what are, so what do so, all those things do so what it does is it um it goes into your guts right and it, I it love gives you and medical. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> and it and it helps the good bacteria in your body. So you think of all this crap that we, uh, you know, put into our bodies. For instance, the flu shot. I mm -hmm. mean, we we don't know what's going in there. We don't know what strain of flu they're giving us. So that's going into your body. Antibiotics when you get really sick. I mean, we all have to go back to work. Sometimes you have to cave in and not oh, yeah. let the, the thing take its natural course. Yep. So even this stuff, like if you gave it to Maddie in a smoothie, it's all that probiotic goodness that you need to build back your good bacteria. Because when you take an antibiotic, it kills all the bacteria. So it right. kills the good and the bad. Yeah. So the most important thing you can do is build the good back and and all of your health comes from your stomach so my mom has it every morning and every night i'm not as disciplined as she is but is it gross be honest no i i love it now and my it mom and i we like make chunky milk no so this is gonna gross you right awesome. out but we make this drink and we call it the kefir sickle i named it that <laughs> it's it's kefir and then you just dump some orange juice in it <laughs> Oh, and it is, I know that's like a orange juice and milk. Okay. That's a curdling nightmare, but oh. it's so good for you. But put it in a smoothie with like blueberries, a banana, strawberries, and just drink Where it. Where am I getting it? Do, do I have to go in a corner in Adobogo and pay well, five you bucks might for have a to, dime? If you want the culture, kefir? I can hook you up. <laughs> Anybody out there that's interested, I can yeah, hook you up. Yeah, Monica's uh, Kfir. And I will com. put on the recipe for it and all the health all right. benefits. I'll send that to you. What so if you, you have a gag it. reflex problem like I do? Like, I can't eat oysters. I, I don't like texture. You can't eat oysters? No, oh, okay. I'm out of this podcast. Yeah, get the hell out. You take your lumpy cheek and get out. I like to just uh, like shuck back an oyster uh, and a cave uh, to me, that's like honestly backwashing snot. Like I, oh, uh, okay. you know what? I'm not, I love oysters. And, uh, but don't anyway, now, I'm not, I'm when I take wine. the garbage out, my I husband laughs grapes. at me because I go like this. As soon as I take it out of the kitchen. I hold my breath, and I can't help it. I end up, inevitably, by the time I get down to the garage, he hears me going, <laughs> <laughs> So I don't have the strongest stomach either, but, 
you don't know once it's in the blender with the blue. Oh no! If that, I did it in a smoothie, I could, could I could make it for you. Literally stomach it. But you uh, if it was a curdly milk drink, like I remember living out west, and a guy went into a dumpster one morning and he took out a thing of milk and he was emptying it into his mouth and you could see the chuck chunks coming out. Okay, that's disgusting. I'm sorry, no, I also drank wine the night before, oh, so boy. I threw up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was my yeah. kafir moment. <laughs> Your kafir moment. <laughs> and all the bad yeah. bacteria joined together to rise in my throat. <laughs> it's not sour bad milk, it's fermented milk. Oh, okay, well, so, all right, I might stick to fermented grapes. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. And you know, uh, the women in Turkey uh, drink it, and the you know, Eastern Europeans, they really... Okay. It's big in their diet, and they call it the fountain of youth. Huh. That might be why you look so good. Okay, yeah, it could also be the lighting it. down here it in could the be cave. Both, or the fact there is none. I think yeah. we both look very... <laughs> I think we look very great. Sexy. <laughs> it could be the wine. <laughs> <laughs> could be the... Well, it's funny because... stronger glasses. You know, when I, 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 I was reading... I don't need stronger glasses. <laughs> um, I was reading just, you know, when you hit your 40s, how your health changes, and you need to build bone density and you mm. need to yeah, do more strength training that. and you know there it's funny you know you just sort of think you're sailing on through and as women i'm like ah oh, i got perimenopause on my ass like really in a toddler and a husband i like i don't need to do anything else i'm pretty much already martyr material now i'm like crap now i got bone density issues and now yeah. i've got Clearly, I've got good and bad bacteria battling in my gut. Yeah. So I've got the you rage gotta, against like, fight that. that stuff. Yeah. So it is interesting that nutrition changes our nutritional needs. And um, mm-hmm. do, you have a, do you have any recipes you can we can post? For the kefir? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'll, yeah, uh, like non-chunky curdling, yeah. uh, disgusting recipes that mm-hmm. non, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Like a curdly kefir. Yeah, you could even like incorporate juice. it into like Caesar salad dressing or yeah, anything like that. You, <laughs> You're not, oh, are you? Is this a challenge? Would you like to do a kefir teeny? <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> All right. Actually, that was one thing. My mom and dad they would share a bottle of wine every night, and then they'd have their kefir drink, and I'm like, okay, that is like kind of gross. The booze with the milk, I can't. But so I, like, I think of it more wine. as a morning drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like crack cocaine or, or yeah. crack heroin or heroin cocaine or however that <laughs> the whole thing works. One brings you up, one brings you right down. You're like, why? Do you think you net out in the Yeah, <laughs> that's what I never understood about those, with the kids with those energy drinks. The kids. The kids. The millennials. Yeah, my husband What's and the, Red Bull and uh, vodka. Yeah, Red Bull and vodka. Yeah. Doesn't it? Oh my God. I don't get it. I don't get it. It should be taken off the shelves. Have you ever heard anyone talk on Red Bull? It's bullshit. Oh God. Anyway. Whatever happened to a good old fashioned Dr. Pepper? Yeah, those? with some Pop Rockets. <laughs> <laughs> and no sleep and some beans. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah boys. Okay. All right. Uh, I need my Maddie moment, so I'm, uh, I'm going to go on to our next topic. Please Are you ready? Do. I'm so ready. I was born ready. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you love, Jesus. That was another bumper sticker moment by Monica. <laughs> We, we, <laughs> we left our last podcast talking a bit about body issues mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, my dad's saying, your calves are so big, they're not calves, they're Holsteins. And your dad's saying, that's a big, big butt. And, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then our moms were like mortified. Oh my God. Now I have to pay for psychotherapy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for different reasons. Mom, <laughs> for different reasons. <laughs> it's funny. I look at Maddie's little calves and I'm like, oh, dude. You could be going down the same path as mummy. Sorry, honey. <laughs> but I can't say it out loud because I don't want to impose my body issues. But I do want to say that I, I don't know if I mentioned this in an earlier podcast about how amazing I was. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I briefly remember something about that. <laughs> well, I uh, we were talking about how you can't impose your fears and your crap on your kid. Mm-hmm. And... Um, there's probably even a law against it. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so I'm mortally offended and, and upset by spiders. They actually make me angry. Spiders make me angry. I hate them. Like, and I had to vacuum in here before we did our podcast. But just they're to make sure. beautiful. They kill okay. Them really all. stop. And um, <laughs> oh I can, if it wasn't the last of the wine in the bottle, I would toss it at you. Um, and so, yeah, I've heard all that. Love nature and blah, blah, blah. 
But I hate uh, them, and they scare me. And so my parents bought tickets for us to take Maddie to the most dangerous uh, insects in the world exhibit. Because that oh sounds boy. like, and she was three. Like that uh-huh. sounds safe. <laughs> so I went because I'm like, why would you take my kid to this? And uh, we had to sit in this like in the room in the Royal Botanical Gardens in Burlington. And the girl brought out like five boxes, and then the kids would go and line up, and each box was a dangerous killer animal. And um, so the second one that came out, and you have to go up with your kid because your kid's three, was a freaking tarantula. And like, okay, clearly I didn't read the website. Oh. I didn't, like, I let my parents buy the tickets. And so I had to call my dad over and say, dude, you're going to have to do this one. Like, I cannot, I can't do it because I can't show her my fear and I can't suppress my fear over a frigging tarantula. Yeah, no, so, that's a little hardcore. So she, she went with my dad. And, uh, and it's funny cause tarantulas, I think are naturally creepy. I realized watching her that this isn't something ingrained in us to hate certain things. Mm-hmm. There is a natural creep factor about certain things. And the tarantula put his little hand out or claw thing. or yeah. whatever death thing. <laughs> and he put it on her, <laughs> on her palm <laughs> and almost fainted. And she kind of was like. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. And she took her hand away. Like, she wasn't afraid. She was just like, yeah, it's a bit gross. Yeah. I think it's the way they move. So anyway, then um, the next thing in the neighborhood was a 10-foot boa constrictor. Okay, that's where I'd have a major That one problem. I had to go up with her. <laughs> oh. And I had to let them put the boa constrictor. No. Okay, that's, <laughs> now you're, no. Nope. But you know what I did? I kind of like with you, when you have an argument with Wayne, you picture him doing it in a British accent. I just <laughs> pictured that I was wearing a very nice jacket and a very nice purse. And I was like, okay, <laughs> it's just it's just like a purse. Nobody pissed this thing off because it's going to tighten, kill me. But she was petting it and I was petting it. And I kept saying to the girl with my eyes, no language, because 60% of this crap is nonverbal. Yeah. I'm like... Don't let this thing kill me, okay? Because this will really traumatize my kid. Anyway, so we petted it together. And I'm like, oh, like it's a nice purse. And <gasps> that was the thing I got nailed on. That I, <laughs> married <laughs> one of Mother Nature's creatures, to a really nice Fendi purse. <laughs> like, really? What were you supposed to do? I was murdering For up God's there. Sakes. Like I was, yeah, what was I supposed to do? Anyway, so that was my mothering moment. Um, oh, so, uh, <laughs> totally. That was oh, I, I have one question we? for you. Do you, uh, do you like soft shell crab? Uh, <laughs> I think so. Okay. I don't know. Do I? I like I don't know. crab. I'm going to take you for a soft shell, but like I still peel the shell I'm going to take you for a soft shell crab. <laughs> like with the whole thing with eyes. Oh, I'm not at anything with eyes and heads. Like I don't no? like calamari when it comes with the little heads yeah. and the brains. You don't like that? No. Oh. Do you? Yep. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You're like a cannibal, sort of. All right, so uh, I don't know where we are. Body issues. Oh, body issues, right. Body issues. Yeah, of course, tarantulas. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Oh, yeah, so I look at her little calves and, yeah, whatever. Um, I'm going to turn that over to you because, Mm. yeah, I've got a lot to say about body issues. Okay. Yeah, go. Okay, I'm going. So I had, <laughs> uh, yeah, like any teenage girl, body issues from pimples to fatness to all that stuff, right? And I had, um, so my best friend in high school, her name was Sally, and she was a tall, beautiful blonde, big blue eyes, you know, 140 pounds, six feet tall, like just gorgeous. And all the guys always fell all over her. And, you know, she was the sweetest girl. that You just couldn't be mad at her. And I was insecure. And to me, she wasn't insecure. I'm sure she had insecurities, too. Everybody but I does. always felt like, you know, Sally was, she had it together and I didn't. Yep. And, uh, and I remember once I brought this friend, a guy, and I wanted more with, with this guy. But I was too scared. When, I think I was 15 or whatever. So I brought him to a dance. And Sally was so happy to see me. And I pretended I didn't know her. <gasps> Isn't that awful? Because, you because I was so insecure about her. me and my and yeah. that he would go for her like stupid, yes, stupid stuff. I, totally I think I did that, that to her twice actually, and she still like loved me. And 
just a great person. Anyway, so uh, in uh, 1990, Sally and I decided that we were going to backpack through Europe together. And I had just spent uh, four months in Germany with my family, so I was like the fattest I'd ever been because... Uh, <laughs> I love Germany. <laughs> Germany. I love Dude. the steak tartare. <laughs> <laughs> the raw meat and the sausages. Anyways, so um, so then, we, yeah, we decided, okay, we're going to do this backpacking trip through Europe. So we end up uh, spending some time in England and then doing a little bit of Spain. And then our first big stop was Portugal. And uh, I remember getting to Lagos and it was so beautiful and we're approaching the beach and I look out and I said okay it's an all male beach there's no women Sally's like what are you talking about there's tons of women I go no there there aren't it's all men it's like nobody has a top on she goes yeah we're in Europe it's called topless tanning <laughs> and it was so that didn't even occur to me oh. and I'm like oh my god oh my god so of course Sally is like right into it tops off right away she keeps trying to get me to do it I won't do it we take a little paddle boat out to the middle of the water and then she finally gets me to do it and then she gets the camera out <laughs> and then I cover myself up <laughs> anyway so there, there was like all this embarrassment about you know being free with my body and, and I remember Sally saying to me, you know, I don't know what you're worried about. Like, you're totally hot. And if I was a guy, I would totally go for you. And, and just like getting that, even though it's kind of like shallow, because that is where my head was at. Like, what guy okay. is going to want me, of right? Of course, yeah, that's where your head is at. Like, you're 20 you years old, exactly. right? But, and I thought, that is like one of the nicest things that you know, a friend could say like at that time, I really needed to hear that. So anyway, on went the trip. I didn't do topless in Portugal. Then we go up the other side of Spain and we get to this little village called Dasa de Mar and we're laying on the beach topless? and they're all topless and I'm still not doing it. And, uh, I look out to the water and I see this woman like laying at the edge of the beach and she is in excess of 350 pounds for sure and she, <laughs> she sits up and she's wearing the weird thing was she was wearing a bikini top right she's wearing a bikini and she's big big girl she takes off the bikini top standing up chucks it on the ground and slowly walks into the water and I was like oh my god who the hell am I why do I think I'm so great the, that's like the most beautiful like this woman does not give a crap. Like she is enjoying nature. She's enjoying being free with her body. And from that moment on, I did not put that top back on. I was topless from Spain to Greece. And when we got to Greece, we got to this like backpackers haven, all Americans and Australians, and nobody was doing topless. And my friend and I are like, okay, there's no way in hell we're going to get the tanning lines back now like we're, <laughs> so we kept going with the top we were the most popular <laughs> people there well, yeah was, because and then we even did it when we got home and a neighbor climbed a tree and almost ah! fell anyway then we had to shut it down with the topless tanning but <laughs> but that was such a great experience for me because I think that was the moment where I just let go of all that crap you know and I mean I still have it I don't I it would probably take me from you know Spain to Portugal, back to Spain to <laughs> do it again. But I don't know. I I just don't. But were you wearing a bikini? Yeah. So isn't it? So you're just wearing your. Like, I guess kind of like the topless your... thing is that we're just so um, trained to believe it's a sexual thing, right? Yes. Which I like that boobs are sexual. I do. Yeah. I don't agree with walking around topless in day to day life. I like the mystery of it. Why yeah. We have a little mystery. Um. You know, but on a beach or whatever, I like the idea. To me, I tried it in BC. <laughs> and, oh, yeah? Yeah, just on Wreck Beach. And I was like, I did it, but I just felt very aware that I was doing it. And to me, it wasn't a body image thing. Like, I worked out all the time. I actually quite liked my body then. It was more that I felt like they were, my boobs were, I just, ah, I, yeah. I just felt like I was in a topless bar. felt like everyone was staring at my boobs mm -hmm. and they weren't because they were just boobs in a sea of boobs, but you can't, it's so hard that's to the separate way I grew up, Right. So that's how I feel. And, and even today, well, God knows today I wouldn't do it, but, um, 
Only because... Only why wouldn't I do it today? Well, where yeah, would I go and do it? Like, I, I don't know. Like Maybe I, that's an, well, a I drinks. A, we need um, a GoFundMe <laughs> project for Jacqueline oh. and I to go to a topless beach. In, yeah, we need uh, to where find... Where do we want to go? Well, uh, why don't we make... <laughs> beaches topless. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny that um, some of the most beautiful women in Hollywood are beautiful because... Of their nature, like their uh, their disposition and their nature, and and some of the most beautiful people I know are beautiful because of that. You know, I look at structure and frame and and faces, and you try to figure out what is beauty. Like, is it a perfect jawline, a symmetrical face? And it's not. It's really not. Like we talked earlier in a podcast about how someone can be so atypically gorgeous and then open their mouths and they're a bitch, and then you're it's gone. Yes. You know, yeah. to me, like the, f- the men I'm most attracted to are just, they're funny mm-hmm. and they're witty and they can make me laugh. And then the more they can make me laugh, the more I look at them and everything about them becomes more attractive to me. Yes. The I men agree. who are really physically attractive and then they talk and you can hear that they're, you know, they're trying to just sort of like impress you. They're trying to, they're puffery. They're mm-hmm. and posers, become, posers because less and less attractive. Mm-hmm. And and you can tell when someone's very aware of themselves, the way their shirt fits, the way a skirt is, or dress looks great, but is too short and they're not comfortable. The way heels are really hard to walk in. You're, I'm so cognizant of that because now I'm so aware of body language and I, I look at, like, the men and women that are around me, and there's a girl in my improv class, uh, Grace. She does an amazing podcast, by the way. I have to give it a shout-out, and I have to get the proper name, so I'm going to put the link in the body. Okay. She's really creative, and um, she's... Uh, her podcast is, like, it's it's hilarious. It's, a, it's like an old cartoon mystery. Um, anyway, I'm not going to do it any justice, Grace, so I'm going to shout it out in our copy. But Grace um, came into the improv scene, like in our little team, and, you know, everyone's kind of looking around nervously. We all have to get up there and put ourselves out there. And as you get to know her, like, you know, she's so funny just in that she doesn't care. She puts herself out there in, in like, crazy positions to fill a scene, to to commit to an, uh, an exercise. And the more she does it, you just are so impressed by her that the more attractive yes. she becomes, right? Yeah. And I look around and I look at people in my life, my life like that, like who become more attractive to me because they do more, they care less, and they just, I think it's their confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge piece of it. Yeah, so the body That's image right. thing, I mean, we are, it does start at an early age, right? Like back then, of course, we were exposed to a different sort of media We've got a very uh, body conscious uh, women empowerment aware media right now, you know, more so than ever in history. I mean, when our mothers were probably in their 20s, they were in their Virginia Slims, you know, feminism, you know, you've come a long way, baby. Mm -hmm. And then when we were going through our formative years, the media was still tapered to that message, but... You know, there was still that undertone of, you're still subclass. You know, it's still all about beauty. You know, Clairol and those brands, they told you that it was about your hair. It was about the layers on your face um, that really mattered with makeup. And and that's what we grew up with. So, of course, we became very acclimatized to being very aware of what we were going through and how we presented ourselves. And that became the thing that we were recognized for in the opposite sex. So, of course, when your friend Sally, who's gorgeous, comes along, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to be measured against her physical beauty. Mm-hmm. And this will be the thing. And this is where I'll lose. Because in your mind, you felt, you know, usurped by her. And I had my good friend Jackie, who was my high blonde, super funny, super pretty, super petite. You know, she was just is charismatic, always was, always, has always been beautiful. And I always felt so threatened by that. But the thing is, I was so threatened by that that I shut myself down. When she spoke, I shut up. Like, I became a mute because I just saw that as so threatening. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like, someone's going to come along. You and I could go to a bar. 
of old man. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I like the My old bar. man, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You I like, like the old man. Um, By the way, Daryl Hall turned 69 a month ago. But anyways, oh. moving on. Yeah. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Daryl Hall, a month ago. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but some man could come into the bar and, and you would be his taste or I would be his taste. It mm-hmm. has nothing to do with which one of us is more attractive. Yeah. It's, Why it's, didn't somebody tell us that when we were like 13, 14 well, we years are old? Now. We're Damn telling this now. podcast. Play this podcast to your kids. Once we bleep out the <laughs> expletives, you can play this for your 13 year old. <laughs> we'll be like the John Tesh radio show. Oh, God. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it is like, you know what? There's some someone for everyone and everyone has a thing that they like and you can't fulfill all those things for everybody. You can't be attracted to every man in the world. You can't be liked by every person you ever meet. And Mm -hmm. you know, when it happens, those are the people that you stick with. I mean, not everyone's going to like our podcast. Everyone likes (laughs) all three people in the world. like our podcast. (laughs) Okay. That it is a, it's such a, we could, we could go on forever, but um, I want to okay. wrap it up by saying that um, I think it was a great topic, and I, I want to know what our listeners have to say about this and what they think about body image. And speaking of body image, there's my yeah, your daughter's body home. Body image. Okay, so body image is where we're going. <laughs> She's going to come and crash. She's going to come crash, the, gonna girl come crash the girl cave. That's okay. Maybe uh, can, I hope people can hear her. That's oh, great. Can't hear her <laughs> above us. Like, mommy, mommy. Oh, hang on. Uh, We're yeah. gonna pause it. Here she comes. Hang on. We got Maddie in the house. What are you? Maddie's got for home. Her? Yay! Oh, you wore a Batgirl costume. So, Maddie, yeah. do you remember Monica? Or where are we right now? Hey, I want to sit there. Okay, Let's where are we over. right now? I want to sit there with my. Baby. Okay. Where you, by your own? Where are we right now? Are we in the? Are we in the girl cave? Yeah. 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 Monica and I are just trying to figure out what a new word means. Monica's going to tell me the word. Okay. Here we and go. And while she's looking for the word, did you have fun at school today? Yeah, I went to Emma's. You I went to Emma's. Emma's. You smell so pretty. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Monica's going to tell us a word, and we're going to figure it out. Yes, I will in a second. <laughs> it's snack time, Maddie. It is snack time. I'm sure Mummy's got some bacon for you. <laughs> no bacon. No snack. No bacon. <laughs> that is a snack. Okay. Okay, so Monica's going to tell us a word. You know Don't what? Get... We're going to do one, and it might be an easy one. Um, okay. But... Okay, Maddie, okay, have you ever heard this word? Rugrat. <gasps> What's a rug rat? Do you know rat? what that is? What's a rug rat? No. Okay. I, Does mommy know what it is? I think I know what a rug rat is. Um, I was cleaning my house and I thought everything was quiet. And then when I turned off the vacuum cleaner, it turned out that my living room was infested with Maddie and her Rugrats. Did <laughs> it work? Well, it kind of worked, but uh, I got bad news for you. Oh, uh, what? Maddie is the Rugrat. <gasps> a Rugrat rug rat. is a child. Oh, you didn't use it in the right sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I so, failed that one kind of miserably. <laughs> so, Maddie, before we turn off the, the computer... Um, what do you like about Elsa? Elsa, the princess from Frozen. What do you like about Elsa? That she has a blue dress. Oh, she has a blue dress. I love the blue dress. What about Anna? What do we like about Anna? She has two... uh, uh, Elsa has one Elsa blade, and Anna has two Anna blades. Oh, that's true. Okay, so um, I wanted to tell Monica what tonight is. Cause Girls night. <gasps> so let's sing the song. Can we sing it for Monica? Ready? Girls One. night, girls night, everyone is here. Yeah! That's I love girls it. Night. Cheers to that. Cheers. Another perfect podcast Cheers. with the best guest. Awesome. Ever. Thank you for joining us, Maddie, for this week's My edition. Noise. 
too. It did. You did it. Cheers with your water. Thank you, bud. Um, so thank you for joining us as our special guest on this week's edition of Drinks at Six. And Maddie, Monica, and I will see you all next week. Can you say goodbye, everybody? Bye. 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 Bye.